Hello, my name is Dave Goulson and I'm going to tell you about thermal regulation in bumblebees, which might sound quite boring, but bear with me. So, when I was at school, my biology teacher told me that insects and reptiles and amphibians are all cold-blooded, so their body temperature is the same as the air temperature uh, around them. And the only way they can warm up is by basking in the sun. And contrast that with mammals and birds, we generate heat internally and we maintain a stable, warm body temperature of about 35 or so degrees, um, depending on the species. He was wrong, um, at least partly wrong, um, because some insects are actually warm-blooded, essentially. Um, and bumblebees are a really great example of that. So bumblebees come out really early in the year, um, as early as March, um, and uh, unlike most other insects, which are still firmly hibernating at that time, and some species of bumblebee live right up in the Arctic Circle. And the way they can do that is by generating heat internally and keeping warm. Um, so what they do is they flap their wing, the, the thorax of a bumblebee, the middle section behind the head, is packed full of flight muscles. To fly a bumblebee has to, to, to uh, flap her wings 200 times a second. Um, now you try flapping your arms 200 times a second, you'll get warm very quickly and that's basically what happens. They, they, that, all that flight activity, all, those fla all that flapping gen warms up the muscles, generates lots of heat internally, they keep that in with the fur, and that enables them to maintain an elevated body temperature that can be 30 degrees higher than the air temperature around them. So they can fly around when um, the, the air temperature is close to freezing, which hardly any other insects can do. But it comes at a price. So the cost of all this is that it's, it's hugely energetically expensive to fly um, and to, to keep warm uh, when you're a small insect. So. To illustrate how energetically expensive it is, it's been calculated that a, uh, a running man burns the calories in a Mars bar, on Mars bar, just in case you didn't know what one looked like, um, in uh, about an hour of running, which is kind of depressing if you're running to lose weight. If you happen to be a man-sized bumblebee, which is quite hard to imagine, but supposing uh, you were, then you'd burn the calories in a Mars bar in just 30 seconds of flying. Uh, so you need a lot of Mars bars. Uh, obviously, bees don't actually eat Mars bars. Uh, they drink nectar, sugar-rich nectar from flowers. That's where they get their energy. Um, and hence, they need lots and lots of flowers to keep them in the air. Um, and that means there's something you can do to help. Our bumblebees aren't doing so well these days. Uh, they need lots of flowers full of sugar. So grow lots of bee-friendly flowers in your garden and you'll be helping to fuel all that activity. You'll help them to, to find their nests and to rear lots of young and ensure that there are lots of bumblebees around into the future. Okay, I've got to go. Thank you very much for listening.